Hey, everybody. Good morning. We are so happy to see you here at church today, whether you're in this room or whether you are watching online. Welcome to Woodlake. My name is Mike. Me and my wife, Amy, just want to welcome you to church today. We're so excited to be in church and to be here with you guys today. If it, our goal today is that you would experience God and find family while we're here. So whether we are worshiping, whether we are giving, or whether we are hearing about God through his message today, we pray that you would experience more of him. In fact, if you are new, this is the time when it's okay to go ahead and take out your phone. Uh, send us a text that says, I'm new, to 918 992-3410. So what that will do, that will connect you with one of our team members and they will answer any question that you may have about Woodlake. I'm Pastor Brian with Woodlake Kids and I'm so excited to be here this morning because last week we opened up our neat nursery through third or three-year-old, I got this guys, through three-year-olds back there. Uh, so we're excited to have them in the back in children's church. They're having so much fun. But this morning, I'm going to need you guys to all stand up because, Pastor Mike, yeah. we're going to kick off first five with like kids. All right. With some worship. It. Let's do it. All right. Everyone, we need all of you up on your feet. Come on, everybody. We got my kids leaders to come out here to help me. Now, here's the thing. We are going to do Jesus is Alive. So there's just a few moves. Can you guys clap? There you go. That's pretty much it. Now, we gotta got to get some hype going. Go like this. There you go. Get some hype going. All right, now take both hands and go like this. There you go. Now we're going to do that, but we're going to spin in a circle. Ready? On three. One, two, three. And the other way. And that's pretty much it. You guys ready to worship? All right, here we go. Let's hit it. All right, let's put your hands together. There we go. drumming skills right here. I don't have rhythm, so just go with it.
Well, why don't you take a second and catch your breath and see somebody across the room, give them an air high five as we get ready to worship today. All right. Kids worship is exhausting. <laughs> I feel like we should be a little more out of breath as adults uh, on a regular basis. One, it's good for the heart. Two, it's just fun, right? I see some nods. You guys agree. Well, I am so excited to be here this morning. We just uh, were a part of leading worship for youth camp all week long. It's two camps worth of worship, but I'm still not done worshiping. I'm still not ready to just sit down and not worship the, the Lord of all creation. So I hope you would just join in with me this morning and just exalt him with all that you are, with all that you have within you. We just have a few minutes that we get to pour out our worship to him this morning. Would you just declare his goodness and his faithfulness in your life with us? Thank you, Jesus.
Now, kids, you might recognize who this is. This is Daniel Tiger. So parents, if you're not sure, that's who this is, Daniel Tiger. And my son Charles loves Daniel just as much as he loves Paw Patrol. And during the show, there's always a part where Daniel stops and asks and looks at the crowd and says, do you want to imagine with me? And so I'll turn to Charles and I'll say, Charles, do you want to imagine with Daniel Tiger? And he goes, mm-hmm. And he'll close his eyes to try and picture what he can't see right in front of him. And sometimes I'll do that as well. When I'm having a hard time picturing what isn't right in front of me, I'll close my eyes and try to imagine it. Well, I once heard that if we want the power and the presence of God to be with us as we pray and as we worship, we need to change the way we're doing it. We shouldn't be praying and worshiping from here on earth, looking up to the sky. We should be looking as if we are staring right at God and praying his blessings down here to this earth. In Romans 8, 16 through 17, it says, For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Now, I want you guys to imagine this, that as an heir with Christ, that as being a part of God's family, God is sitting, Jesus is sitting right now at the right hand of God. And you are an heir with him. So imagine yourself. I want you all to do this. Close your eyes right now. Now, first, picture yourself where you're standing. You're in this auditorium. We're worshiping. The band is on stage. Now I want you to shift and imagine this, that you're standing right in front of God and Jesus in heaven, worshiping him and praying for his presence to come down to this earth. Go ahead and open up your eyes. If we want to be in God's presence, we need to change our position of how we are going to him. And as we're about to see here as in heaven, this is a declaration of that when we are in God's presence, that miracles can happen. So as we sing this next song, if you guys need to close your eyes, I want you to imagine yourself standing in front of God and praying that his presence is surrounding you so that way we can see miracles down here on this earth. So join us as we sing here as in heaven.
pray for the next few minutes. If there's a need in your life, if there is someone hurting that you know or someone here in this room right now that needs prayer, would you just lift up your hand? If you're walking through a situation that seems impossible, you need a miracle this morning, just lift up your hand. And I just invite everyone to look around the room, spot somebody that you wanna just lift up in prayer this morning. Everyone just take a second, look around, see those hands someone to pray for. We're going to keep singing this out because a miracle can take place right now with the spirit of the Lord in this room flowing through each of us. So I just want you to take some authority in the room this morning and declare the word of God and healing over these needs, over every person with their hand raised right now and anybody not here in this room. Let's sing this out. Let's sing this out as a prayer over these needs. Lord, we believe it in your name. God, when you show up, you change the atmosphere. God, your spirit inside of us changes who we are. It changes the world that we live in. And today, God, it's our prayer that you would show up. God, in the situations that look dark and hopeless, that you would show up and change the atmosphere. God, for those that need a miracle, God, for the ones that have been struggling for years and years and years, may today be the day that they see a miracle in their lives. For those watching online that are struggling, God, today may it be the day that you come in and change the atmosphere. May today be the day that a miracle is seen because you are there. And God, your word says that where we gather, that you are. And Lord, we thank you for your spirit. God, we thank you for the power of your spirit that enables us, God, to be witnesses. Lord, as we gather today in this room and online, may you change our atmosphere. May you change the world that we live in. May you bring light where there's darkness. May you bring hope where there is none. In your name, amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. You can be seated. Good morning, church family. My name is Brady. I'm our student pastor here with you, and I promise I have a lot of energy somewhere deep down inside, and I don't always sound like this, but the reason I sound like I have swallowed something very large is because we just got back from camp, 
And then the presence that you feel right here is the presence that we had at camp all week long. Yes, we had a ton of fun. We got muddy. We got gross. We played all kinds of room games. But the presence of God himself showed up in the midst of our students. We took a record amount of students, 149 students. That's three charter buses of students and then some. We literally had to take church vans. Pastor Jamie brought an incredible word. We had amazing speakers, an amazing time. Students were baptized in the Holy Spirit. We had over a dozen students accept Christ for the first time, and we had students called into ministry. God moved in a powerful way at camp, and I want to say thank you. Because of what you give, because of what you do, I mean, we had students who would have never been able to go to camp go with us for the first time, and God started something that will never end in their life. I believe they had true encounters with Jesus that will change their lives. So I want to say thank you for what you've done to get them there and for letting us be a part of something amazing this past week. Yeah, camp was amazing. I actually got to go for a few nights as a part of the worship team. And let me just tell you, the Spirit of God in that place was just so thick. And we believe that God was changing the next generation of leaders. So thank you so much for investing, for praying, for giving. It means the world to us, and it means the world to our kids, right? So before we go any further, today's offering focus is for our essentials ministry. So what that ministry does, it helps to provide the essential needs uh, to people in our community. One of the ministries that we actually partner with is the Bixby Outreach Center, and they help uh, as people come in to fulfill some of those basic food needs for uh, clothing, for financial assistance, that type of things. And we are super excited to partner with that ministry. And Kelly Stanley actually heads up our essential ministry here. Can you guys give her a hand? Her and her team have been rocking it. Thank you so much. Anything that you give today above your tithe, every single cent will go towards that ministry and to help get those needs into the hands of those in our community. And if you'd like to give, we have plenty of opportunities for you to do that. The easiest way to give is by simply taking out your phone, which if you want to take out your phone right now, you can leave it out so you can take notes here in just a few moments. But the easiest way is to text the word ESSENTIALS and any dollar amount to the number there on your screen, 73256, and you can give straight from your phone. You can go to our website, woodlake.church, and give there. Or if you have a physical offering that you'd like to leave today, the ushers will collect it on your way out. But please be a part. Every single cent that you give goes to spread the gospel and meet the needs of people right here in our backyard. Yes, we give around the world, but man, we're also giving literally right down the road. So every cent that you give today makes a difference. That's right. So as you are giving today, let me just pray a prayer of blessing over that offering. Lord, thank you so much for the ability to give. God, thank you for the gift that we give. Today we give it, Lord, out of a heart that is happy. God, we give it out of a heart that just wants to see your will done. So God, I pray for every gift that's given. God, may you take it, may you bless it, may you multiply it, and may it go further than we could ever ask or imagine. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, now is the time where you can pull out your phone if you'd like to continue taking notes or being a part of what's going on. We have a lot of opportunities for you this week, you and your family, to be a part of the ministries that are going on each and every day here at our church. Take a look at all the awesome opportunities we have for you this week. I'm Amy, and welcome to Woodlake. Here's what's coming up. Every Monday at our Turley location, we partner with Food on the Move and give away free food to over 150 families in the community. This outreach has been incredible. We have also had four different churches get involved to help distribute the food. This has been an amazing way that we are serving our local community, and we'd love to have your help. The outreach begins around 9 a.m. every Monday and is finished by noon. If you'd like to volunteer, you can show up at Woodlake Family Church Turley or let Andrew know. Last Wednesday, KP3 was at Turley, and it was amazing. You and your kids can still join with Lake Kids for the KP3 Tour Live from 6.30 to 8 p.m. They will be at Glenpool on the 22nd and at Bixby on the 29th. This is a family experience for everyone in the family. Special appearances by Dizzy Danny D, Brick Waller, and Kip. Want to stay up to date with everything going on at Woodlake? Subscribe to our church text by texting UPDATES to 918-992-3410. We'll send you occasional updates and info about everything that's happening. Don't forget to head over to events.woodlake.church for more event information. Have a great week. 
Well, good morning, Woodlake family. My name is Brandon, and I'm one of the pastors here. And if you are new with us, I want to say welcome to the family. Can you all give it up for our worship team real quick? Man, what an amazing start to service today. If you are new, what a great day to be in God's house experiencing all he has for us this morning. Now, if you are new with us, I want to catch you up real quick on the series that we are right in the middle of today. We're in a series called Dressed to Kill. This series is all about the idea of what Paul was sharing in the book of Ephesians when he talked about something called the armor of God. If you've got a Bible on you or if you just have the Bible app pulled up, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 6 this morning, and I'm going to catch you up very quickly if you're new with us today. Ephesians 6 verse 10 tells us, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Woodlake family, this sermon series this summer is not about just living a better life. It's not about being a better Christian. It is about being better equipped for the battles that we all are facing. It is no mistake that you are at church hearing this this morning. If you're anything like me, you know that there are battles going on all around us. This week, as I was getting ready for this message, I was just thinking about the fact that for many of us, life has changed dramatically over the last four months. It's almost hard to believe that in March, everything was quote-unquote normal, and we had no idea what was coming. But here's what I love about people. I love that people can do a few things whenever the world goes crazy. One is I have seen a lot of people, especially you in this church, taking care of one another, loving one another. Another thing I love is that I've seen people get really, really creative because if we're being honest, people have just gotten bored. And so as we get started this morning, I want to show you a few of my favorite memes that have come out about 2020. The first one is this. If 2020 was a bag of chips, orange juice, and toothpaste. Now just picture that for a second. This next one, also kind of food related. Ah yes, a nice cup of 2020 poking you right in the eye. This next one I think is actually my favorite. This was based on a news article that came out recently. Yesterday marked the beginning of a quote, above normal hurricane season. Oh great, there's another one for apocalypse bingo. And this last one, so this last one is the best for our sermon series today, me being prepared for 2020, and there's 2020. Now here's the reality. A lot of us feel like this today. We feel like we had life figured out. Just a week ago, we had things figured out, and then it seems like every single day, we're faced with a new problem, a new issue, something new that we need to keep in front of us. Well, here's the reality today. When we put on the full armor of God that Paul is talking about, there's no weak spots. There's no empty spots. There is no part of your heart, your mind, your soul, or your spirit that 2020 can get a shot in when you are wearing the full armor of God. So today, as we begin this, we've been telling you this through the whole series, we are in a battle, we are not defenseless. Now, one more time, I want to read you what the full armor of God is all about. Ephesians chapter 6. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We like family, as we begin today, I want us to practice putting our armor on. So can you do me a favor and give a huge round of applause to Pastor Brian and our kids team as they make their way out this morning. Thank you, Pastor Brandon. 
All right, you guys, we're going to show you how to put on your armor of God because you should be doing it every single day to prepare just like you get dressed for every single day, all right? So we're going to run through it once and teach you guys it, and then we're going to do it all together at the end. So first, everyone put on your helmet of salvation. There you go. So that guards our mind and our thinking. Then the breastplate of righteousness, just like that. There you go. It guards our heart. Then we have the belt of truth so that we may not tell lies. And then our feet point down at your feet. Our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. And then lean forward. Pick up. Oh, there you go. We pick up our shield of faith, which quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. So no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And then we get our greatest weapon, which is the spirit or the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And chop the devil into pieces. There we go. Now, it's really important that we say that really loud, you guys, okay? Are you guys ready to do this all together? All right, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and put on our helmet of salvation, which guards our mind and our thinking, the breastplate of righteousness that guards our heart, the belt of truth so that we may not tell lies, our feet are shod with the gospel of peace, we pick up the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy, so no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And our greatest weapon, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we chop the devil out of pieces. <laughs> All right, there we go, Pastor Brian. All right, everybody, give it up for Pastor Brian one more time. Man, I don't know about y'all, but I've loved having our kids team with us. And if I'm being honest, as an adult, I learn more in big church when they're here to help. I just got to be honest that, with you about that this morning. Well, if you're new with us, I want to catch you up very quickly about what we've been talking about. On week one, we talked about that belt of truth. And Pastor Jamie said, we need the truth of Jesus. It's the truth of Jesus that holds everything in life together. Last week, Pastor Lauren spoke, and everybody give it up for Pastor Lauren. She did an awesome, awesome, awesome job last week. She talked about the breastplate of righteousness and told us that purity protects us. It is our purity and living right that protects our heart. Now today, we get to talk about the footwear. So let's go again to chapter 6, verse 15. It says, and you're with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. Woodlake family, today we are talking about a really important, often underlooked and overlooked part of the armor. This week as I was getting ready, my wife thought it'd be fun to just kind of Google some things and see what the internet told us about Jesus shoes. And I want to show you a picture that she found. Okay, so she looked up Jesus shoes. These are the shoes that came up. Now to you, these might not look that different. These shoes supposedly are injected with water from the Jordan River into the soul, and those cost a mere $4,000. But if you buy them, you can walk on water just like Jesus. So she showed me that this week, and no, he did not order them, but those are not the shoes we're talking about. I actually want to show you the shoes that Paul is talking about in this passage. As he was getting ready and thinking about the armor of God, he was watching Roman soldiers walking near him. And I think he had to have noticed that they were wearing some pretty unique shoes. These shoes, we often don't think much of them because we look at them and see them just as sandals. But if you look at the picture on the screen, I want you to see that these shoes were not just normal sandals. They actually had an added benefit. I want to read you a description of them that we found this week. It says this, on the bottom, these shoes were equipped with extremely dangerous spikes that were one or more inches long. If a soldier was involved in active combat, his spikes could have been close to three inches long. Believe me, these were killer shoes. These shoes prepared these soldiers for two things. One, it prepared them for the obstacles that they were sure to face, and two, it provided them a defense against their enemy. Woodlake family, I hope you're starting to get this this morning. God has put something in each one of these elements of the armor to prepare you for whatever it is that life wants to throw at you. 
I want to go back to our scripture again. And you say we've already read it twice. And again, I'm glad the kids are in here because it reminds us repetition helps us remember stuff. And so I want to look at this again. It says, with your feet fitted with the readiness. This morning, I think if you've ever heard about the shoes of peace before, chances are you've heard a lot about the peace element of the shoes. And that's great, but the more I studied this, the more we realized that yes, the peace comes, but it is the readiness that we really need when we're walking in to a battle. So for just a moment, I want you to think about an area in your life where you have worked hard to get ready. Maybe it was a job interview and you really wanted to dress to impress. Maybe you have to think all the way back to your wedding day when you spent a little extra time getting ready. Or if you're a student thinking back to the prom that did happen or didn't happen in those moments where you just spend every moment getting ready because that thing you're going to is so important. Well, today I want to actually show you some situation in my life where I had to take a little extra time getting ready. Now, before this video plays, I want to tell you a couple of things. One, this video is pretty old and was shot on, I think, a flip phone, so ignore the quality of it. But two, this video was shot before I went on what I promised you was the worst date of my life. Check out this video. I should have guessed when I talked to her at like, Okay, this is the video of uh, Brandon's kind of first date. He's uh he's ironing. Look, I am ironing. Ironing a shirt. Ironing my shirt. And there's a rose that he had to customize. <laughs> right there. There it is. It was ten feet long. <laughs> that was three inches. So you always get a picture. Um, Brandon. Yeah. So, so what do you have to say? Why are you excited? I am. I'm very excited. You look like a rooster. I do. I still, still, still need to shower, and there's still a lot of the process that needs to happen. But and I feel like we can pull it together. And Whitney's early. And she's early. Yeah. So no rush. Yeah. She wasn't quite sure how long it took to get here from Lawton, and uh, yeah. Hmm. She's here. She doesn't know how to count hours or turn on Google Maps and nope. see the estimated arrival. No creases. That's how you iron. All right, so that was my worst date. Now, if you were listening close, you would have heard the name Whitney. And yes, we are now married, and we survived that date. We did date for a little bit and then break up for a year, but that's a whole other story. Um, (laughs) But here's what I want you to see. In that video, there was some nervous energy. I wanted to impress her. I wanted to do everything right. And in forcing myself to try and do everything right, I did almost nothing right, but God worked it out because God is good. Woodlake family, today I want to encourage you that whatever your readiness has been for some other area of your life, we need to approach our faith with that same level of preparation. So today, if you're taking notes, I got one idea that I want you to remember this morning, and it is this. Progress takes preparation. I'm going to say that again because I want you to write it down and get it. Progress takes preparation. This morning, if you want to move forward, you got to get fitted. I'm going to say that again because that's good. I want you to remember that today. If you want to move forward, you've got to get fitted. Throughout this entire season, I have seen so many people close to me, and they have said, I just feel stuck. Maybe you're here this morning and your job has told you, hey, don't come back to work just yet. Or maybe you're here this morning and that job that you went home from in March to take a couple of weeks to wait this thing out isn't waiting for you anymore. Maybe you're here today and you're one of our students and you're so excited to play ball this year, but every day your parents and teachers are talking about whether or not those games that you were so ready for are even going to happen. And when we begin to let these thoughts into our mind and our heart, we begin to feel stuck. But Woodlake family, I need to encourage you with something this morning. In your spiritual walk, it's time for us to stop sitting and start stepping. I'm going to say that again. In your spiritual walk, it is time to stop sitting and start stepping. The Bible talks all the time about movement. Think back to the early pages of Scripture. When Moses led the people out of Egypt, the Bible talked about them Walking. In Genesis, it talked about Adam and Eve walking in the cool of the day, talking 
with the Lord. You see Jesus and his disciples walking to carry the message. So Woodlake family, I believe there are some spiritual shoes that you need to strap on because God has a walk that he has prepared for you and it's time for you to take a step. But if you want to start walking, you got to get prepared. I want to read you another passage this morning in 1 Corinthians. It tells us this, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. And get this, Woodlake family, so I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Woodlake family, I want you to understand that purposeful progress takes purposeful preparation. I'm going to say that again this morning. Purposeful progress takes purposeful preparation. I've heard it often said, you don't ever end up somewhere by accident. You only end up reaching your goals in life on purpose. So how do we get ready? Well, if you're anything like me, the hardest step to take is the first one. The hardest step in working out is that first step out of bed, that first morning that you've committed, I'm going to go to the gym at 7 o'clock. It's a lot easier to step up onto the treadmill than it is to step out of bed in the morning. Maybe in your life there's been an area where God's calling you to get prepared in the area of relationship and restoration, but the hardest step is that first step to take out your phone to make the phone call to say I'm sorry. You see, whatever is going on in your life, it is my belief that God has every step ordered for you, but so often he is going to apply the Holy Spirit to your stepping, and you've got to take a step for him to be able to get you to the destination he's called you to get to. Woodlake family, I want to encourage you today. This is not a time for the church to sit silent. With everything we have faced in life, it would be so easy right now for us to laugh about 2020 being orange juice and toothpaste and staying in our houses, staying in our spiritual quarantine. Woodlake family, your spirit is not sheltering in place. Your spirit does not need to be bottled up. God has something for you, and this wasn't in the notes this morning, so I'm sorry, but I want you to understand that God needs a church that will get on the move even when physically you can't go very far. Woodlake family, I believe, and some of us were just talking about this last night, I believe there's a revival coming. I believe God is going to show us what it means to get people to know him, even when the churches have to have six feet between rows. The Holy Spirit is way bigger than six feet. I'm just telling y'all. So if we want God to do that in our lifetime, if you're like me and you've got a kid or a grandkid that you want to see step into God's grace and victory in their life, it is time to get ready. It is not time to get rested spiritually. Woodlake family, I want to encourage you today that the Bible is full of stories about preparation and progress. I want to read you another scripture. This one is from Jesus himself in the book of Luke. He says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must take, deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Well, like family, this is a daily step that we need to take. I believe that God has incredible things for you. I believe that God is going to use this season in your life, but we have to get up and strap our shoes on every single day day. This armor is not a one-time thing. We can't pray a prayer and be suited up every single day. We need to be ready to step into what God has for us. And if you ask him what your next step is going to be and you take it, you'll end up way further than you could have even imagined. But what does he want us to step to? Maybe you're hearing me this morning and you're like, okay, that sounds great, but what do I actually do? How do I actually take a step? I hear you saying that, but what does that mean? Well, as we were studying this this week, I found a lot of really cool commentary on the armor. And I want to read you another passage out of one of those commentaries talking about these shoes. It says, shoes or greaves of brass or the like were formerly part of the military armor. The use of them was to defend the feet against the gall traps and sharp sticks to obstruct the marching of the enemy. 
those who fell on them being unfit to march. Woodlake family, these shoes, this idea of spiritual preparation will equip you to walk through stuff that you never thought you could handle before. You see, these shoes were armored in a way that the soldiers could walk through fields of battle. Some of the commentaries we read were actually a little bit more graphic than this and talked about how they could walk through areas where those who had fallen before them were still on the ground. The Bible uses this picture because Woodlake family, I know that you are walking into a battlefield every morning. I know that you walk into a battlefield every time you turn on your phone, every time you turn on the TV, every time you step out and go to work or tell your kids to wake up. I know you're walking into a battlefield. And this preparation thing is not just to propel you forward, it's to protect you for the journey. So these soldiers would wear these shoes, and it tells us that the shoes would both protect them from the things they were stepping on and prevent others from stepping on them. It was protective, and it propelled them. So Woodlake family, I need to ask you again, what areas in your life do you need God to get you fitted? Spiritually, as we talk about these shoes, it is important to remember that whatever you put your foot in will determine what you can rest your foot on on. I'm going to say that again this morning because Pastor Jamie got it, but I don't know if everybody else did. What you put your foot in will determine what you can rest your foot on. Now, I got to be really transparent with you this morning. I last, a few months ago, my wife and I were watching The Last Dance, and during watching The Last Dance and seeing Michael Jordan, she graciously allowed me to order a pair of Air Jordans that were on sale for Father's Day for myself. Now, I got to be honest with you, though. I wore those one or two Sundays, and I've got some stuff going on with my foot, and nothing hurts me worse than those shoes. This morning, I had a moment in the closet, because I haven't preached for a while, and I was standing there deciding, was I going to wear the shoes that look like they're my granddad's, or was I going to wear the new Air Jordans. And I had to wear these because if I would have wore those, I wouldn't have been protected or prepared for what I was going to do today. (laughs) Woodlake family, spiritually, there's things in your life that might look a little better. You might feel a little cooler, but you'll be less prepared for what God has for you. Now, real quick, I'm going to let that sit with you for a second. Everybody give it up real quick as Pastor Brian comes back out to help us out this morning. I like your shoes. Hey, thanks. All right, so we have our kids leaders over here are bringing out some shoes for you guys. I want to help you imagine this. (laughs) Okay, thank you, gentlemen. I greatly appreciate that. So here we have shoes and boots, okay? Pretty just general things here. But if you look at it in a little more detail, you'll notice some differences. So these are just your normal running shoes right here. But these, although look like normal running shoes, are actually golf shoes, which have never been used. But, (laughs) so, look very similar, but have completely different purposes. Then we have a pair of warm, fuzzy, cozy boots here. And then we just have your standard boot here. So they're both boots, and we have both shoes, but if we put on the wrong pair, what we're trying to do is going to be a whole lot more difficult. Because if you try to go and run in these golf shoes, I pretty much guarantee you, you're going to roll your ankle. If it's a ton of snow outside, which doesn't really happen in Oklahoma, but if you're somewhere where there is snow, and you try to wear these, I guarantee you, your feet are going to freeze. So whenever it says that God gives us, that our feet are shod with the gospel of peace, and we think that, We are walking in the gospel of peace, but if we haven't put our armor on, the enemy might try to put our feet into something else. And although they may look like what God has provided us, they may function completely different. Pastor Brandon, back to you. There we go, for Pastor Brian, one more time. So once again, what we put our feet in determines what we can rest our feet on. If you're taking notes today, I've got to remind you one more time, progress takes preparation. I want to go back to our verse one final time this morning as we get ready to close. It says this, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Now this idea of peace is very important, but I don't know that it's important in the way that we've always been 
told. It's not just that we have peace with us all day. It's that the gospel message of peace prepares us for conflict. As I was studying this week, I heard a great quote about this too. It says, the ready courage and preparedness from conflict, which the gospel gives, the gospel of peace instills readiness for conflict. Woodlake family, there is no conflict you face in life that the answer is not peace. The answer is always love. The answer is always peace. So ultimately, if that is true, the answer is always Jesus. Again, I'm so glad the kids are in here because it allows us to remember what the kids' church answers are, which is what's the answer to the problem? Jesus. You see, the peace that we get, the preparation that we get, is not just some spiritual thing. It's a very real, tangible, historical thing that as we remember the gospel of Jesus, we know what it looks like to be a lamb led to the slaughter. We know what true power looks like when we look at our Savior who ruled with peace. So today, I want to encourage you that the Holy Spirit wants to give you peace for whatever it is that you are stepping into this morning. As we get ready to close today, I I want you to picture for a moment a soldier wearing these shoes. Now this soldier is not carrying a sword. This soldier is standing on the front lines getting ready to run and deliver a message. They came to him and they told him, here's what you need to say. And he begins to run back to the town to let everyone know what was happening. And as you see that soldier running in your mind, I want to read you one more passage of scripture going over the cadence of his feet hitting the dirt. In Romans chapter 10, it says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I need to tell you one more thing from history about these shoes. You see, back in ancient times, there was no way to easily get messages from one place to another. Oftentimes, they would have messengers that their entire job in battle was to let the people at home know what was going on. Well, history tells us that as these men and women would run back to town, you could tell from a long way out what kind of message they were bringing. Oftentimes, if they were walking slow, with their head down, not kicking up a lot of dust, it meant that they were bringing bad news. Back in those days, those who brought bad news could have been punished by death. So if I'm fighting in a battle and our group has been killed and I'm going home to tell their families, it was customary that I would be killed on sight, knowing that I was bringing bad news. But if our soldier had strapped on these shoes and ran with news of a victory, he wouldn't be walking slow. He would be running. You would see a cloud of dust before you would ever see his feet. Woodlake family, I want to encourage you today. That soldier would be running to tell the people of a battle that's already been won. Woodlake family, I want you to hear this. As you are prepared, God is preparing you to tell others about a battle that's already been won. So as you walk into areas of your life thinking, I don't know if I can tell them about church. I don't know if they're going to be into that Jesus thing. I don't know if I can share my faith. Stop walking with your head down and start kicking up some dust because you have some good news that God's preparing you to share. Now, Woodlake family, if you're with us today, I know in a crowd this size, especially with those watching online at home, I bet there's multiple people in here that have never said yes to Jesus. Well, I want you to know that my shoes are pretty dirty today because I'm running to share some good news with you. The Bible tells us that all have sinned, all have fallen short. That means that we all have made mistakes, but Jesus gave his life so that we can live with him forever. The Bible tells us that we have victory in Jesus. He is the strongest, most powerful warrior and kings that have ever lived. But in his strength, he gave grace and peace to those who need it most, which is you and me. So Woodlake family, progress takes preparation, and the best preparation you can have in your life is preparing yourself for an eternal life with Jesus. If you could, bow your heads and close your eyes all across this room. I'm going to pray for you today. And if you're here this morning and you want to say yes to Jesus, the Bible makes it very clear. All you have to do is confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart, and you will be saved. You will be set free. You will be prepared for the battle. You will make progress. 
in your faith. So if you're here today and you want to say yes to Jesus, I'm going to make it real simple. I'm going to count to three, and on three, I want you to boldly raise your hand. And if you're at home and I count to three, I just want you to send us a comment or a message to let us know you prayed this prayer. Now, Woodlake family, I want you to be bold. You will not be the only one raising your hand today. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand if you want to say yes to Jesus. One, two, three. All across this room, watching online, I want you to let us know about it. Okay, second group of people I want to pray for today. I know that in a crowd this size, once again, there are many of us that are stepping onto battlefields we weren't ready for. Well, spiritually, God is going to equip you with shoes that can help you stand on whatever you're going through. So if you're here today and you're walking into something that you need God's preparation to help you make progress, I'm going to count to three and I want, to ra- I want you to raise your hand and we'll all pray together. One, two, three. All across this room, walking into a battle. Yeah, yeah, we see you today. Oh, Woodlake family, we do not pray alone. So please repeat after me and say it loud. Say, dear Jesus, you are the son of God. You died for me, for my sin, and my place. Forgive me. Make me new. From this point forward, I'm all yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Woodlake family, would you stand and give the Lord a big round of applause as Pastor Mike makes his way to the stage today. I've been praying all week.